you up to 9 o'clock. Everybody's microphone on. Pull it closer to you. We'll remind everybody to speak in the microphone so we can hear the recording. Uh, Jim, would you? Yeah. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you uh, for another day of life. We thank you for this opportunity that we can come and meet and discuss kind of business. And as always, we ask for your guidance and wisdom in making these decisions, and we pray that each one of these decisions will be made properly and correctly. And uh, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for the forgiveness of our sins. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Score Beaverson? Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. Score Travis? Yes. Score Jerry Moody? Yes. Score Brewer? Yes. Score Mike Moody? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, we're still on uh, July 19th, this report meeting. Yes. Uh, I've got uh, also on the plan and zoning, uh, I'd like to rescind my uh, motion to. Uh, deny the uh, development of the Nicole Roof on Will's Way and uh, send that back to planning and zoning also to a little discuss it now. We've got a motion. Second. 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 
And we've got a second for a brewer. Uh, the reason for this is uh, I don't believe planning and zoning took into consideration uh, their comprehensive plan, that their, their guidelines, and uh, I want to specifically quote uh, in the residential land use on page 8 of 1 under the uh, objective. Objective 4.6 says curb sidewalks and street lights should be required in all high density developments. Uh, they did not require that of um, any of the development in that uh, top flight at this time, and evidently they're not uh, following their own comprehensive plan in doing that. So. Okay, we've we'll got a motion. Any other discussion? Call roll. Chair Carlin? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Peterson? No. Okay, motion passes. Uh, we're still on July 19th. This report meeting minutes. I need a motion to approve those. Motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Squire Travis? I assume that's within the corrections. That, that is in corrections or one of the things that I noted would be on, on those two items that you just rescinded, so that might be moved. Maybe the correction would be the uh, the thing with those two motions is there was no finding a fact, and I know that was part of the motion, but it's kind of moot at this point if you are rescinding the motions to start with, so uh, maybe should those be struck from the July 19th meeting minutes? Will uh, be reflected in today's meeting minutes that we've rescinded those motions? But yeah, if we rescind the motion, then it doesn't make any difference whether it says recommendations or not. Because when it comes back to us the next time, we can make that motion with the facts and findings on it. Okay. All right. Any other corrections? No, it's all the roll. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? What's the call the roll up on? Approving the uh, minutes. July 19th meeting minutes. Okay. Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Beaverson? Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. Okay, next up is the meeting minutes from our special fiscal court meeting, July 28. Motion to approve those minutes. We've got a motion. Second. Uh, Squire Beaverson. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Beaverson? Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's going to bring us up to uh, communications from the Judge Executive. Uh, just want to make note of the email that was uh, sent to everyone from the county attorney regarding the zoning issues. I uh, also want to mention that we received the information from the Department of Revenue with regard to the tax rates, but it was not time to get it in the meeting packet for this meeting. We'll be taking that up at our next meeting to set tax rates. Uh, it is interesting, and you'll see when we get that, that uh, uh, you know, I, I, I looked into my crystal ball and uh, saw that there's uh, probably no chance that we're going to pass the 4% rate. It's going to be the compensating rate, but either way, the tax rate will go down. So just uh, thought that was interesting. So uh, with that, I'm going to move on to communications from citizens. Uh, anybody want to address the court? Larry? <clears throat> Councillor Jones, you've got numerous documents that I gave you. 
concerned in the Medeiros Chesser claiming his own case. Why I applaud this court for backing up on the Medeiros Chesser case. I fail to understand what this court thinks is going to happen by kicking it back to claiming his own. Is it merely just to save face? I think planning and zoning is going to change what they've recommended to begin with. So what you've, in essence, done is you've delayed Mr. Chesser at least two weeks, if not more, depending on when planning and zoning meets and then when they come back with the same recommendation. I wish that this court, if you're going to get involved with planning and zoning, fine, but do your due diligence. You clearly understand that I beat you time and time again with ethics on open records and open meetings. You can't even grasp that, let alone the complexity of planning and zoning. If you would have taken your time to do your due diligence and just go to Julie and ask her, she would give you the colored maps and she would show that there are 36 homes single, double wide, and modular within a 2.5 mile radius or less of where Des Chesser wants his modular home. So when, when Bill Drury stands up and says, well, it's not consistent, he's either delusional, he's a liar, or he's a comment. Because here's the maps. Julie's right here. Julie will authenticate that what she's given me is accurate. 36 homes within that 2.5 mile, and two of them were recent in 19 and 20. So when the argument's made that it's not consistent with the area or the comprehensive plan, that's BS. I hope that before you end this meeting, that you guys go ahead and approve Darius Chester's rezoning and let the man go on. You know, we're going to talk about the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Isn't part of the Bill of Rights the pursuit of happiness? Isn't the American dream to own your own home? That's all this guy wants. And to boot, they talk about devaluing Tracy Cox's house by having a modular, and I find out she's illegally demolishing buildings. She's burning them. I filed a complaint with planning and zoning. I filed a complaint with the fire district. Julie can back that up. And now it's going to Kentucky Air Quality for possible investigation and penalty. So we've got the pot calling the kettle black here. Well, it's going to devalue my property. But meanwhile, i got a shithole. But I want my view of the woods and the birds. Screw everybody else. Well, my saying is that's great. Buy up all the land around. All right. Uh, just want to remind everyone we're not having a public hearing here. This is citizens' comments. Uh, so, uh, Andrew, you're up. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Andrew Fallon. I've talked to each one of the magistrates on a phone call. I've been. Uh, sorry, that was cool. Uh oh. We'll uh -oh. send you a bill, Andrew. Oh, that was good. Uh, no, that's no problem. Nice. So not that bad. That makes me think that microphone's not on. If you did oh. that and it didn't make no more noise than that, <laughs> nobody right. heard it all. Right, I can talk about it now. <laughs> it's okay. But um, I've been appointed by the Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Committee to research economic development and talk to each of the magistrates about developing a plan to, to reinstate an office at some point. Um, I've talked to about 12 different individuals in the region do economic development and um, I'll probably put something on the docket next meeting and I'll talk to each one of you. So I just want to say hi, put a face to a name, and uh, thanks for allowing me to help here in Spencer County. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the court this morning? If not, we're going to move on. Uh, communications from uh, uh, reports, <coughs> uh, members of other offices, committees. Uh, Julie, <coughs> you're up. All right, good morning. We have a second reading this morning, and that is the Walker Family Irrevocable Trust requesting back on agricultural to Arlen Residential on a 1.005 acres known as Track 2C located on Gilder Tifton Road. 
Commissioner Travis made a motion to recommend the rezone the application of the Walker Family Irrevocable Trust requesting Ag1 Agricultural to R1 Residential on 1.005 acres known as Track 2C located on Yoder Tipton Road. The comprehensive plan recommends low uh, Sorry. The comprehensive plan recommended land use map indicates the area should be medium density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Um, that was seconded by Commissioner Fowl. Motion carried. This is motion to approve based on the findings and facts of the Planning and Zoning Commission. We got a motion. I'll second it. Is Mark Brewer seconds that? Any discussion? Call the roll. Scott Brewer? Yes. Scott Mike Moody? Yes. Scott Beaverson? Yes. Scott Riley? Yes. Scott Travis? Yes. Scott Jerry Moody? Yes. Um, if I may, um, with the two zoning applications that you all have recommended back to planning and zoning, Ken, do I need to wait until your minutes are approved before I take that to the planning commission? Or can I go on and take that to the planning commission on Thursday? I think you should go ahead. This meeting? Right, where you made the motion to send it back. That was approved in the prior minutes. We did. Correct? Well, we would send it was not in the prior meeting. Well, if it needs to be, I'll make a motion to the two that we sent back to planning and zoning, have them immediately dig into it, come back at the next meeting. You got a motion? Got a second? Any discussion? Well, the reason I'm asking this question, if I'm, I know I'm not part of the motion, but is because sure. the last motion you all made I just what you're was I rescinded before the minutes were approved. So would this one possibly be rescinded before the minutes are approved? By by her logic, we should have amended our minutes before we approve them to include the rescission motion and the motion to send it back, and then approve our prior minutes. You're a law school question. You make it much harder for us than me. Uh, so I don't know. I guess if we wanted to go. <clears throat> rescind our motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting well, what and if, then go and say that we're going to add all the stuff we did this morning I mean, I, what if I just make them aware on Thursday that <laughs> that is the intentions of the court is to send it back to them but have them <clears throat> not take any action until we can run it out of time well but I think you made your action, though, didn't they? By sending it back to the planning I commission, so. I don't think I think that stops the clock. I think we start all over. That's what we had discussed about. Work. Yeah. And I'll be honest. I've got training tomorrow. Um, all the planning commission and the magister, I got a magistrate going, and some uh, all my board of adjustment members. I will ask that question to training tomorrow. Let's see where we go with that. One. That's the uh, handle. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you're going to that anybody else going to that training? Okay. All right. Thank you. Is that all you got? That's all I got. Uh, except for I will be closing the office tomorrow because we're going to train. Okay. Um, and I will put this out here to uh, my new employee Ashley. Uh, she lost her mom very unexpectedly. Um, it's Friday night, so she's out today with you know. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Julie. 
Next up is motion. Oh, motion to uh, motion to go ahead and have planning and zoning address this. Uh, for for Brewer, did you say? No, oh, Swart. Oh, that's right. Swart uh, Moody. Swart Mike Moody? Yes. Swart Beaverson? Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. Swart Travis? Yes. Swart Jerry Moody? Yes. Swart Brewer? Yes. Spencer County uh, Conservation District. Submitted their annual report. Uh, if you want to take any action, they just. I would just like to make a comment on sure. Uh, their report, I think it was it's a very good report. It's in depth. It's got some really nice pictures and describes what they're doing. And uh, I'd like to say I just appreciate them doing that. And also, the information with the fire department last meeting, he gave us a report annual report and it was the same way. It was a very thorough, and a lot of nice pictures and, and what they did. And I just wanted and I emailed the nation that and I just want to make it public that uh, I appreciate it and I'm sure this court does too. All right. Anything else? Uh, next up uh, EMS emergency management personnel, nothing report. Safety committee report, I know you all met this morning. Yes, we did have our uh, safety meeting this morning. We discussed uh, uh, information that I got from Keiko as far as uh, required safety training classes. Uh, we are in the process of putting uh, a class together sometime in October. Uh, a lot of those classes have already been done, uh, just uh, annual uh, retraining. And then on the new hires, it would be uh, uh, their initial training. So we're moving along. Moving along in the safety, uh, safety mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, anybody have any questions on the safety committee? If not, move on to the solid waste committee. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Uh, moving on to the veterans committee report. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. And equipment committee report. Uh, nothing. Any idea where we, uh, I saw there was a, uh, Report that Florida maybe uh, straightened out the problem with the chips, with the getting the chips. I don't know if you were staying abreast of that or not. Uh, what, where did you see that? It was on the news. Of course, you can't believe. Everything you see on the news, I mean, maybe that's inappropriate to say. But uh, <laughs> on the internet, that's something like that. So. <laughs> yeah. um, so you know, they're, they're hoping to be able to get a prize to us by the second week of August, at the end of the second week of August. Oh, so, okay. And that would be for our 2022 transit van for our corner? Yes, sir. Did you talk to Doherty's by chance about the corner's van? He, he said yeah. it's just uh, uh, not worth repairing the air conditioning is, is out and there's a lot of problems with it uh, he said it's safe to drive but it's just not working apparently right. i was not notified on that it's been working pretty good with the bills uh with Brittany, uh talking to me about each bill and then also uh not taxing the getting it out of the bills and i have not heard anything on the angle Okay, if you uh, get a chance, you might talk to John or their daughter. He's in, okay. He'll fill you in on the details. I'll go up there. I just know he told me last week, he said it's, it's not uh, unsafe, but, you know, with no air conditioning and some of the other problems that it's got, you know, it's just not worth putting any money into it. So. He, he's probably right. Yeah. Um, and, of course, animal shelter still needs a...
That's basically what we're down to at the road department is needing a, a roller and a backup. Yeah. Refresh my memory, but did we have that discussion about a year ago on the roller that we were going to get one for Metro Roll? That evidently fell through. We were actually I, supposed I, I to think, get two, I think. But yeah, I, two of them. When Metro Roll will be finished with the equipment, out of 100 pieces, you might have one that's worth getting. So we did, never did get one? No. no. And we had one, there was one jewel that was one at an option within the we last year. We missed out on that one. And uh, uh, Keith went up there and we decided, the road department decided was it was worth and they was way off from where it belongs. And from then, uh, I haven't talked to Todd for probably two weeks. But, uh, he said just hold off right now. He's covered up uh, with other stuff. So, communications committee report. Found out this morning, EMS needs to get a few more uh, data drops so that they can add additional phone lines. And I'll get some pricing from Brent on that um, and find out specifically. So, I'll come over. Get some specifics on where the drops need to be and uh, what the capacity is of the router that's already there. Also, uh, Chris was letting me know he was having trouble using the app for the phones so that you can remotely answer the phone. Um, so I'm not sure what the difficulty is on that. I have an email over to Molly. Uh, requesting a further update and if I'm allowed after the meeting and can report on it next time just send everybody the update from whatever from what Molly I don't see any problem with that. I have no problem with okay. that. Anybody have a problem with that? Okay. Just don't get into a yeah, back and forth. Off, uh, That's uh, why I have to hear it. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's all. No, all right. One, one thing I want to ask about the telecommunications. I know Lynn has been having a lot of problems with her faxes and stuff, and then Julie reported this morning that she's having a problem with faxes. Is that all connected to the telecommunications transfer? It could be. I mean, she said, like, yeah, she said, I don't have an answer right now. Okay. Okay. Do we have a go to person to call when they install that? We do. I do. I call Brett. <laughs> <laughs> I think Molly, Molly, and uh, Brent. Those are the two. They're the two main people. Uh, you know, it, 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 we we knew in making that transition that we had some bugs to work out, and I know it took a little while to get some decent uh, internet connection over to the recycle center and, and so forth, but. Uh, all in all, it's been a tremendous improvement, I think, to, to move in that direction. So. Yeah, as far as I know, the cycle center still doesn't have the phone system running. Right. I'm not sure. I, I thought, I could be wrong, I thought they got that straight okay. out last week. Or I, I well, hope, I hope you're right. Yeah. All right. So any other uh, communications from members, other offices, committees? And none. We'll move on to old business. Uh, first item is the nuisance ordinance. This will be a second reading on our updated nuisance ordinance. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the second reading of Spencer County Ordinance Number second. 14, an ordinance to amend the regulations of nuisances in Spencer County, Kentucky. We have a motion, and we've got a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Call the roll, please. Carl Beaverson. Yes. So Charlie? Yes. For Travis? Yes. For Jerry Moody? Yes. For Brewer? Yes. For Mike Moody? Yes. All right. And next up, we've got uh, some visitors here with Kipta, uh, Danielle Story, and Jenna. Uh, Brian. Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that, Jim. Yeah. No, no problem. And uh, we've got a couple items that we're going to be taking up. One is the uh, uh, ARPA 
uh, potential of an ARPA, and we can do this in either order. Okay, the ARPA right, contract or the CDBG utility. Yeah, thing. so I'll start with, um, well, well, let's start with, with CDBG because you all, the court has already passed a resolution to apply for the CDBG utility assistance grant. And so good news on that, we finally have movement from, from DLG. I think they were a little inundated with applications, you know, well over 150 applications, I believe, across the state that they were, it's pretty substantial. So they finally got some movement on that. We had, uh, we've gotten all of our grant agreements back for all of the entities in the KIPDA region. That's how DLG is handling it. They're doing a region at a time. So we, they want to make sure every entity in a region is moving simultaneously so that when we roll out the funds for the utility assistant, it's consistent across the across all of our counties and cities. So uh, we had a grant agreement meeting last week on that. So that, that'll be moving forward. So uh, we now have to sign uh, as part of that, your admin, DLG stated admin for that for those funds, but you are required to have a CDBG administrator administer those funds for you, and then your uh, multi-purpose will be, will be the organization that's actually assisting the clientele and getting out money for utility systems. So there's a total of 8% admin, 5% goes to KIPTA, their development district, 3% goes to multi-purpose. What goes to the... Fiscal report. Uh, that, Nothing. Is that what's in between the five and the three? Or total? Just, yeah, it, yeah, it's just in kind. Of it. <laughs> we're so kind. Of, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that's so. so we're, we're now we're going to be starting that process. So I'm here today to um, get approval for you all to go ahead to enter into a contract with us for professional services to provide that CDBG administration. And so at this juncture, uh, what KIPTA will be doing now that the application has been submitted and approved, is there a list of evidentiary materials that we are required uh, to, to compile? Some of that will be coming back and coordinating with the court. There's some documents and uh, regulations and policies that, have to, that the county has to have in place that's required by HUD. And so we'll be going through the motions of getting all those documents together. Um, you will be signing, uh, signing uh, an agreement with multi-purpose for their services as well, and then we'll gather all of that, and that goes back to DLG, and then we request the release of funds, and then multi-purpose will then be able to, to implement um, implement that program. How those funds work, just as a reminder, fiscal court is the applicant, we'll draw down 25% of the funds of your up to $200,000. It'll go into the account that you all created specifically for this purpose, and then you all will immediately transfer that money to multi-purpose, for the purposes of disseminating the funds. And we'll help you, we do all that. That's part of the admin. We, we help with all the draws and all the reporting and all the stuff that comes along with that. Okay, I know our treasurer's gonna have some questions, but I'll entertain a motion to authorize me to uh, execute the Commonwealth Kentucky contract for CBDG, CD Utility Assistance 20C-092. That is it. So moved. We've got a motion. Second. And we've got a second. So uh, and I will be sure to keep you all uh, updated on that process in court. Uh, we've got a motion. Is there any, any uh, discussion, questions, comments, concerns? If not call the roll. Judge Brown? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Beaverson? Yes. Judge, could you send that motion to me, please? I'm sorry? Could you please send the motion to me so I have it for the minute? Uh, the motion? Okay. No. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, okay, look. and we've got a question. On this, when we get the 5%, 25% draw, yeah. do mm -hmm. we just immediately then just go ahead and send what goes to multiple purpose and the 5% that goes to KIPTA? Yeah, so how we'll do that is, and so I got some advice on that at our grand grant meeting that we have with DLG. So what we'll do when we pull down that 25%, yeah, we'll go ahead and do the 8% admin. That go, yeah, 5% that goes to KIPTA, 3% that goes to multiple purpose. We'll do that with each draw in proportionate to that amount. Well, I just wondered if we needed to wait till they multiple purpose sent us something before we issued the check. Yeah, you, them. you will have, no, I think you'll just go ahead and do it because you cannot hold, you can, you can only hold that money uh, for five days in that account. 
because you got you, you're required to move it out as soon as possible. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to make sure on y'all's part too. Yeah, and I'll make sure you have guidance on all that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we've got a, a federal. Um, it's a federal grants account. Grants account is that sufficient, or do we need a something separate it's from that? Yeah. Do you, do you have anything in that that account? It's a little right now. I think it would be fine. And right now, that's the only thing we're using it for. Okay. Well, then or I think, on using it for yeah, I think as long as yeah, so I think as long as if that's the only thing that's in that account, I think that that would suffice. But if you don't mind, you could shoot me an email today, and then I'll forward that to DLG for official approval, so that we know 100 percent that we're good to go. Okay. okay. So that uh, that's been something that's been in the works for months and months. And yeah, we're finally. I mean, I was I was uh, you know. Trying to, trying to be as understanding as possible. I know DLG is overloaded with Ar the ARPA stuff and with this program. And, uh, so, yeah, we've had to wait quite a while to get some feedback on that. So I'm happy to see things moving along. Um, there's still some stuff for timeline. I wish I could give, a, a, like, oh, I definitely know, like, one month or six weeks, this will be, the funds will be released and we'll be ready to go. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't quite know yet because we are still, even though it doesn't really make sense to do so, we are still required by HUD to do an environmental assessment on the project which is uh, a little lengthy. Uh, this is going to be slightly different because there isn't a services space, so there's not an environmental impact, but we still have to go through those motions. So I, I have to get a better understanding of how long that'll take, and then I can maybe get you all a, a firmer timeline here in a couple of weeks. And just to be clear, what this is going to be for assistance for anyone that has fallen behind on water, sewer, electric, electric yeah. What about propane? Yep, they can do that. Even propane. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they're behind on these bills because of this pandemic, then they can apply for assistance. Uh, That's correct. Right. And uh, so mm -hmm. uh, it will be 200000 from uh, the from the county and 200000 from the city of Taylor. The, the city of Taylor still, when we calculated their need, they didn't. their need wasn't at that 200000 mark, so theirs is $150,000. 150000 But they'll be, so it's a total of uh, $350,000 okay. in so if folks that live in the city can tap into it twice? No. Okay. No, it's based solely on within in, within the limit. So if you're a city resident, yeah. you apply for the city funds. If you're a county resident, you apply for the county funds. What is the difference? Uh, the uh, COVID relief funds that we received last year, which we still got some, uh, it, couldn't that be used for that same purpose? Uh, you all could have potentially used it for that, and so this is just through a different program. It still, it was funding that still came through 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 the CARES Act actually that went into HUD, that HUD distributed out to the to the states and for this purpose. So so it was still that same from that same pool of funding. But yes, in theory, you could have. Used that and that, I know Judge Gary Moore talked about that several times. We've got the ARPA money, but you, you want to be cautious about spending the ARPA, it's not spending the ARPA money because there's various different, what he termed the silo of money that can be used for broadband expansion or various right. different things. So, um, but yeah. the CARES money sh uh, could definitely be used for a purpose like that. I believe it probably could have when you all had that. That's going to be a good segue into your oh, next yeah, item, ARPA. and that yep. is the ARPA funds and, and KIPTA and what role they might play in this. And I thought it was worthwhile bringing it to the court. I don't know how the court's going to feel about it, but I think it probably would be a, a good idea in, because of, you know, we're, we're coming up on elections. We're going to have uh, new folks sitting around this table. Uh, January of 2023, and, uh, but it's a, I'll let Daniel explain it, but essentially GIFT is offering to play a role in the management of our ARPA funds and doing reporting. So. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, as you all know, with the American Rescue Plan Act, you all have all this funding coming out, and there's all this guidance from Treasury that's, that's ever evolving and always changing. And so uh, we, we decided to offer up offer up the service of providing administration for your ARPA funds for a fee of 1% of your total funds is what we would be charging. And what we would be doing was, is essentially, we would have somebody that we would be coordinating with, at, 
as, as the county representative that, I, that I'm, you know, trying to call project manager, whoever is responsible for overseeing your ARPA funds here at the county, and we would be in communication with them. But we would handle, um, so some, some of our services include adherence to all draw requests required by the U.S. Treasury interim and final guidance, submission of all quarterly and final reports as required by the Treasury, coordinating receipt, validation, and all contracts associated with any projects, and that includes architectural, engineering, and construction. Um, advising the fiscal court on any environmental uh, guidance or requirements that are supposed to be connected with any of these projects, as well as anything that might be connected with prevailing wage. Um, we will also make sure that we have communication with any, uh, constant communication with any, any entity that you all are um, partnering with, to also make sure that, because like, they Potentially, if you all have a sub-recipient, they also have certain reporting requirements on their end, and we will be in communication with them to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing for the reporting side, and we will just sort of take that on for you. As well as just staying up to date on all treasury guidance and making sure that we do the proper research on your behalf to make sure that the, uh, any projects or expenses that you all want to pursue are actually eligible and that the court will be in good shape. Um, the reporting requirements on this are a minimum of, of you know, five to six years. Some reporting goes out farther than that based on if there's a project that's ongoing. So potentially sometimes up to 10 years depending on, on what how this uh, plays out and what you all end up spending your funding on. So the services that KISI provides is we are a, a long-standing organization and community. We've been around for 50 years. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we can provide some continuity and a little bit of peace of mind to, to Spencer County for support to make sure that we stay on top of all the reporting. Any questions? Yeah, basically, uh, you're doing the administrative end of it. That's right. I would be curious. Will, will, will you guys be, won't be recommending any projects? Oh, no, we absolutely can play that role, too. Okay. And so that's that's part of um, the advantage that we have is we're connected with lots of funding. You know, lots of different, you know, you know, you know sitting on the board, there's always things coming around. And so what we would like to do is also if you come up with a strategy to how to spend your funds. Uh, because there is definitely a strategy to how how to navigate this funding and how, how to get you know the rest bank for your buck essentially and so we would be assisting that that element of it and then if we think that there's another pool of funding that makes more sense for a project that you want to do we will encourage that funding and explain to you why you know just giving you perspective on the on various funding yeah. we're going to be taking up uh, the purchase of election equipment uh, here in just a minute. Um, is that, that, is that, uh, that's tricky. That's something I would want to look more into, Judge, just to be completely honest, because I do have a tendency to, to agree with, you know, um, Rich Ornstein's opinion on that. And I, I think that it's a little bit tricky because it's not COVID specific. And that's a need that existed uh, pre pandemic. And so, um, so even that's something that I would have to do some research on and help you navigate. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because that, that I don't feel comfortable answering it straight at this juncture. I have, and that's that's the thing right now that a lot of the guidance is very new, and you know it's taking so getting in contact with several people for getting some proper guidance on a lot of this. Let me ask you this: uh, when we uh, moved to to uh, purchase approve the purchase of this equipment, which likely we'll do this morning, um, should that motion include? Exploring the funding of that equipment through ARPA funding, or does it make any difference? I don't know that it necessarily makes any difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that, you know, um, like Rich said, if you, you maybe need to take another stab at um, writing the resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we could always maybe come back and uh, ask for, you know, to get our money back. We were already had. You know, pay for it ahead of time. You know, get reimbursed from the art money mm -hmm. if they say that it's okay. If it's approved, yeah. Um, you know, In the event this court sends back the ARPA funds, mm -hmm. are we still on the hook for the one percent? Um. Uh, no. I mean, we would. I mean, if you all. I mean, it depends on that. That's, that's a good question. I have to go back to my executive director and depend on how much assistance we provided. You know, if you all ultimately decide, if you all change your mind and decide, so the contract could be written that, that it's one percent of actual money is 
drop uh, expended? If you all decide to potentially, yes, I can take that back to, to Jared and see him. But um, to see to see what he advise, advises on that. Um, and the, the likelihood of sending that money back is probably slim, but uh, you know you don't know. Uh, can't tell. This can't tell. tell. You can't tell. <laughs> uh, but you know, just the ability to be able to spend it all. I mean, you know, yeah, and that's it. that's essentially we want we. A lot of the guidance that we want to provide with you guys, because we want, if you all have the money, we want to make sure, we want to try to help you guys to come up with a strategy to spend the money that makes the most sense for your community and try to help you all figure that out. Is it, is well, I, I think this is smart to, to do this if, the, the, um, if Jared would look at, you know, that 1%, would that apply to the entire amount that we've been yeah, I think, allocated or the amount that we actually use? Uh, uh, I think it, I think it. Clarification from him that that's something uh, that you're all. Yeah, I, I suppose our motion could include that provision um, and then come back and revisit it if it isn't suitable. But well, you know, it, it all, to me it makes sense that the 1% would only be on what we spent because we might end up sending $200,000 back into 2026 because we didn't spend it. We're not going to charge us 1% for that, I'm sure. I mean, it yeah. just makes sense. Yeah, so um, it is not the contract is not written that way, so that's why I can't I can't right. speak to that. So I would have to I'm I'm sure that that's probably absolutely fine to amend a contract to state such. But since it's not currently written that way, and I have to have that conversation with Jared. I, I, I guess. So we can approve the you all can approve me signing this contract pending the uh, uh, change in that language. To, yeah. Correct. That way we want to come back to get approval once we get that answer up. I'm sure it'll be fine, but again, yeah. yeah, I have to get it. Um, the, the other thing, uh, uh, you know, I think KIPP the, uh, and the ad districts as a whole across the state are going to be more aware of what some counties are doing and what success they're having and that sort of thing. So there's going to be a lot of, I think, really helpful information. Not that we wouldn't have that anyway, but. Mm -hmm. Well, the ads across the state are are offering this service, and and we do are in communication with one another about what's happening in the region, and so we that's how we we, we know a lot about what's happening across. The state. I know on the CARES money, for example, we ask, can we use, can we be reimbursed reimbursed with CARES money for the purchase of an ambulance? And the answer was no, but we could get reimbursed for the purchase of the power cots that we purchased. Uh, so that's why we opted to, to do that. So. Uh, but with ARPA money, we don't know. I, I, I've heard no, you can't. For and the I've heard, uh, you know, uh, Judge Eisen in Shelby County. No, you can as long as you, you can make a COVID argument. And so you yeah. you have to be able to make the argument that the necessity of, because you can't replace an ambulance with this new purchase. It can't be a replacement purchase. It has to be in addition to. Um, you also have to, make, it has to be COVID justified. So you have to be able to, Feel comfortable making the argument that the there was an increase in 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 runs that couldn't be sustained with the current fleet. This is why you need an additional ambulance. Or you could potentially make the argument um, that you are purchasing an ambulance now in anticipation of increased cases due to COVID variant and and a lower vaccination rate. But I know that's been an argument that's been yeah. been proposed. Um, I, I, I'm going to highly recommend that we approve this contract uh, well, subject to the change in the... Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, authorize you to uh, enter an agreement with KEPTA to administer the county's ARPA money with any stipulations that we have this time. And that would be subject to the change in the... Based 1% based on spends, on um, funds spent. <coughs> Okay, I've got a motion. Is anybody going to second? I'll second it. Well, I mean, you know, we need to move on. Uh, we can't sit here and stare at each other. Mm -hmm. uh, for discussion? Yeah, it's uh, up like to the contract. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to vote on something that I don't have. I mean, all, all we knew was that Kipton was going to come in here and talk about it because we have, we have 
Nothing coffee. to look at, nothing to mull over, nothing to, to you know, to feel comfortable in both. Uh, no, uh, and there is, in the sample contract, there, it does say it in here, I, I have a few copies, I don't know if I have enough for everyone to take, but um, it does say she'll take 50 of that big 1% of our funds received or blank pursuant to this agreement. So I think it's actually already written in a way that we can adjust it accordingly. Okay. Um, one of the things that, uh, uh, and uh, 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 Scarborough, this is not on the motion, and we can just take it out of the next meeting, but. Uh, one of the things that I anticipate, and Chris and I have uh, met uh, a week before last, I guess now, uh, with uh, the Semitech uh, folks. Uh, as you all know, uh, we have those running in our ambulances to sanitize our ambulance. And I think there would be no, should be no question about whether that would be an allowable expense of ARPA funds to to put equipment in our HVAC systems that will sanitize our office. I think that would definitely. I think it would definitely. So uh, we had uh, Alton Holt, the uh, owner of the company, up the week before last, went to every county building and we're awaiting a quote. As soon as I get there, I'll bring it to you guys and we'll uh, hopefully, that, that may be one of the first things that we spend our ARPA money on. Well, um, I don't think there's anybody here at this table who would be willing to take on what Kip is willing to take on. We don't have the time. We, you know, we work uh, our day jobs, and I don't think we have the expertise and the and the, and the communication that Kip has with the rest of the, all 120 counties. So, you know, for us to try to administer, you know, uh, these ARPA funds to save one percent, you know, to me, it's it's a no-brainer. I totally agree. I mean, it, it, it would do wonders for Doug, I mean, as far as the reporting and all that stuff. But I don't feel comfortable signing, saying yes to a contract that I haven't had, haven't had the liberty to, to even look at yet. That's fair enough. What's the culpability of bad advice? <laughs> well, it would, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. So, the, um, so what I, we, were, we would recommend that anything that we advise you on, of course, we are going to be in communication with KLC and KCO and all the, the attorneys there as well, you know, for, 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 for recommendation. But we would also ask you to approve everything through your attorney. <laughs> 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 anything that we that, that's going to be our recommendation because we are not, we are not legal. Don't get one percent. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we would want to make sure that, that the attorney is, is comfortable with everything that we would recommend doing. Of course, we would already have been in, in communication with KLC and, and, and KCO legal advice. So I have a feeling it would probably, everybody would be on board with Well, if, that, if that's the case, I'll rescind my motion to uh, approve this until our further notice, further meeting, when we gain more information. Okay. Send us a copy of the contract. Okay, yep. Yeah. I, I will. I can adjust it. Um, I think if, if it's. Probably so if there's anything within the contract that you all see that you think should be amended to make you more comfortable, please just reach out and let me know. We've got plenty of time on that anyway. So yeah, you, you all have time, like I said, and there's no, and the, that's going to be yeah, the biggest are, piece of recommendation is to, to give yourself plenty of time. You do have a report, a reporting coming up in the end of August. Let's have a question. Are you going to kill or administer this and all? Are we going to send the funds to you all and you all write the checks for the things we buy, or are we still going to do all that and then you all just make do the reporting? Oh, no, no, you all would still be, you all would have to be responsible for writing, for writing your the checks for it. We would just handle all the reporting side. So there is another element of that, and, you know, just for your purposes. I mean, I was just wanting to make sure. That is the, the most recent guidance on reporting that you would be. So that's you would be connected with. Lunch, take, take a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a potential here of this being an overwhelming task for Kipta. Well, yeah. So we have Jenna Graham. She's actually a, a new hire at Kipta. That she was. In, she, that actually her role is was actually specifically come, that came out of care funding. Actually, her role and it's funded through EDA for the sole purpose of pandemic recovery and response. Mm -hmm. So we hired, there is, we have an additional staff person 
um, on hand to handle that as well. And so her and myself would be the primary contacts for, for this work. Um, I, I think if we would not be offering this service if we didn't think that we could handle it. Uh, Jim's had the benefit of sitting on the KIPTA board since uh, he came in as magistrate, and so he may have a little more insight about the awesome amount of work, particularly I mean, you know, the, the Community and Economic Development Division mm -hmm. is phenomenal. There's just five of you. Yeah. And you're handling how many counties? We handle six counties, seven, and for EDA, for including Jefferson County. So, so. Yeah, there's, and we are, yeah, there's lots of good stuff happening currently, so we've been real busy, doing you know, lots of good work. Well, you've all been extremely helpful to, to Spencer County, I know that, so we appreciate the work you do. Of course, of course. And, uh, I said, happy to answer any questions. If anybody has any follow-up, please feel free to reach out. Um, happy to answer any questions related to this. I do have a question not relating to this, but okay. a few many meetings ago, we asked for a proposal for to check into uh, broadband. And I believe the judge passed that on to you guys to look into yeah. what, where do we stand with that? Or no, I, I mean, I just uh, made a suggestion that, yeah. that perhaps maybe it should be looked at on a regional basis rather than county by county. That is our recommendation as well. So um, we have we have to go to the board with this, but I, we do, as part of the care funding and like some of the funding that we received funding Jim's position, we are also looking into, and we have to make a proposal to our board and get approval to do so. But what we are recommending is that a region, a Kipto region study for broad, a broadband feasibility study that we could pay for out of our funds on your all's behalf. And so, because right now, I feel like the, the best approach before you all could get into, you don't know how you need to expand broadband and what that looks like unless we do a feasibility study to, to see what that what those identify as a, as, as a regional perspective isn't there already something the lieutenant governor has on identifying <coughs> all of the areas of need there are there are a couple there are yes so that that is also not complete so they put out a map and so it's it's the responsibility of the providers to to determine whether or not they have reached out. So there's some uh, pretty off gaps, there's some gaps and there's some inconsistencies there. So there's, there's gonna be a few rounds, I think, of updating that map and determining what those needs are. And I think that that can definitely be utilized um, in a broadband feasibility study. Um, but I, the, my concern is, is that you all are getting, you know, you're having a provider come to you saying, oh, we need to be the ones to do it, and other providers says, "Oh, we need to be, we need to be the ones to do it." I think it might be best for you all to have a full picture, a bigger perspective from an outside person, and not a provider who would be benefiting from the service to give you, you know, a, a, an unbiased sort of view. Yeah, of this the, was supposed to be data from the people, right? Exactly. But like, and because of that, there are, like I said, there's some gaps and some inconsistencies. Uh, yeah, identifying the un unserved and yeah. unserved areas. Yeah, and so they had, and it is, it is, a, I, it's great that the, that, the, that the state is making that effort and they're trying to compile that, and that is very useful, and very helpful. It's more than what, we're identifying more than what we did know, absolutely. Uh, that's for sure. So, where do we stand at this point, at this time? No worries? Really? Um, I mean, no, I mean, I have what, I mean, like, as far as I was not informed that I needed to be, be doing anything <laughs> for the purpose of, okay. of a fiscal board, so I don't, I don't know. But I do, we, um, right now, no. And, and a lot of portion of that is the state actually has been, as far as the broadband funding is concerned, they were actually, um, PAG has still been working out the guidance on that and how that's going to work. They, as of a few, few weeks ago, they didn't, they didn't fully know okay. yet anyway. So we've kind of been holding off on that a little bit before we actively pursued pushing the study. Correct me if I'm wrong. Spencer County could move forward and say, what well, we're doing is, uh, or apply for you know, the two hundred and fifty million dollars silo of money. Mm -hmm. if, uh, is that ARPA money? I guess from the state, possibly. I don't know, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we could move forward. It just doesn't make sense for Spencer County to, to do this, and every other county in the fifty region do the same thing. One of the providers told me as well. You know, with regard to Kentucky Wire and all that. You know, the, you know. 
they, they have to consider when you get what do you do when you get to that county line? I said, well, that's why. Why won't, wouldn't we do that regionally? That way, they, who cares what where the county line is? You know. Uh, Providers too. Develop have, your network. Yeah, but they have made comments on a regional perspective being more cost effective, and it, 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 and it costing each of the counties less if, right. it's, if it's coming from a, from a regional perspective. Is that something that we're, we're all the counties and, and Serve I get that would have to agree to a contract. Yeah, like you would have so if we if you all if the counties decided to do that, like if our proposal first is to do the feasibility study so that you all know how to best move forward if you how you make the decision. And then yes, the counties would then have to make an agreement to pursue that in unison. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other questions? Do we have a motion or something? No, no you said that. that no need to resend the second motion. You made the second. Oh. Shut down the second. The motion itself is resented. So. Okay. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah. Thank you. For the record, I will resend my second. There you go. Easy as that. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next up is uh, we need to declare a vehicle surplus. That's a 2004 Chevy Silverado, and I know. Jerry has checked that VIN number and checked it twice and thrice, and that is the correct vehicle that we will be selling. Okay, so I just need a motion to go ahead and declare that vehicle surplus. I make a motion. You got a motion? I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes. Next up is. Uh, the election equipment we've got a we did put that out for bid a harp uh, i don't know that any election equipment supplier has a master agreement with the state of kentucky so we were required to put this out for bid and uh, harp was uh, uh, bitter the board of elections has recommended that we move forward with this purchase and i will entertain a motion to go ahead and and make this purchase, I believe the motion should include to use ARPA funding if available or if um, allowable for the purchase of this equipment. So we do have a ARPA representative here. Uh, if you would if you have any. I'll questions. make a motion that we accept the ARPA's bid for 173 276. With the understanding that we may use our money for this purchase. We have a motion. A second. And we've got a second. Any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't say anything. Uh, Jim? I would just ask you if he wanted to say anything. Uh, Probably cross it. I think Tim's got a question. Just going to ask Lynn, this is. This is what you need and want, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Ross, did you want to weigh in on this? I, I, I just want to say one thing. Uh, if, I don't know if it needs a motion, but at the bottom of this, um, the manufacturer of this equipment is Hardy and Civic out of Austin, Texas. They are offering an additional one year warranty if you actually make the purchase before September 30th. I don't think so that's going to be a good That will give you three elections that you're trying to remember. Yeah, and uh, we want to make sure we get the equipment to get it in place for the training, uh, long before the training that's going to be required for the When do you next think election? we can actually receive this equipment and have it up and ready to go? Uh, from the time we place the order, it takes about three weeks to come up. So three weeks. Okay. Right. Question. Yes. <clears throat> You're not making this product, are you? Absolutely not. We, we are How long has this company been in business in Mexico? This company's been in business for 100 years. We've been in business for 100 years. They didn't have no. it. was 100 years ago. <laughs> no, but we, uh, they, are, they were a small private owned company, just like Park Enterprises is. Um, we've been in business with them for over 20 years now. Uh, they've been making voting equipment. They had no plans to get out of the business. Uh, they're the second or third largest vendor, or re, uh, actually reseller and vendor of voting machines in the country. How come you didn't pick them? 
How come your company can pick them over the other manufacturers? We had every single company come in that at the time was selling voting machines and we felt they had the best on the market. And we've been very happy with your equipment since then. And there's been a lot of manufacturers of voting equipment. At the time we did this, there were eight now that are down to three manufacturers. And we're, we're the only reseller in the state that actually live and work in this state. There is a one, one other vendor that's been uh, certified in the state to do business, but they're out of Omaha, Nebraska. The other question. Uh, we've had a lot in agriculture on this electronic stuff. And also, this this day, it can get any part of it. On the? On agriculture. Okay, on agricultural equipment. Yes. Yes. And that's part of the thing that goes on with voting machines. When, when voting machines become obsolete, we can only keep them going for a period of time. Uh, the current machines you all right now own, they haven't manufactured that in three years, so the parts are getting tougher to get. That's why we we're pushing the fiscal court to make a recommendation to go to a new machine. So, and you just have how much warranty now? The, the standard warranty is one year. If purchased before September 30th, it'll be the second year of warranty free. Okay. And then you say after they're three years old, it will be, we'll have. Something goes wrong. Break fix. Parts is getting will be hard to find. No, not on this. This is brand new equipment. These were just manufactured two years ago. Any other questions? No, we guarantee equipment up to 20, 20 year of coverage. The shelf life on voting machines is 16 years. And then you start looking to refresh. So y'all guarantee us that these machines for 16 years for 16 years that we can get parts on. Well, we will get parts up to 20. Up to 20. But, and if you all put that in writing. We can, if you need to. I think it needs to be. But your current equipment, we, we don't do agreements with anybody unless they request it. Uh, to date, every county that we cover in the state of Kentucky doesn't require agreement with us. Uh, loading machines is a big purchase, so it's not like you're going to buy them this year and two years from now decide to want to move to another manufacturer. But we're here for the long haul, the, the parts will be there. We they won't even start manufacturing another line of loading machines for 16 years. So we'll keep all the parts in place. It's, it's my understanding just hearing Lynn talking talking to Lynn, she's never had not one time request assistance and never got from these guys. If I may, um, sure. HARP also provides election day support, so if a machine goes down at a precinct, they send somebody out. The machines that we have right now are 12 and 15 years old, um, and when we have a part go wrong on the East Slate machine, the only way they can get replacement parts from that is from salvage from other machines that counties had turned in. So they're not making those parts anymore, so we've kind of pieced together, as it is, our machines to keep them going. That's what I'm going by, man. I knew we was having trouble, and I know everything. And, and you're saying these things are 15 or 16 years old, and you're, you're having trouble getting parts. <laughs> no, they don't have trouble getting parts, but they, they're not manufacturing new parts for them because this particular type of machine is not going to be allowed to be sold anymore in Kentucky because you can't produce a paper verifiable audit. Okay. It doesn't sure. print an audit. So this, machi this machine is not going to be able to be sold anymore in Kentucky. They've decertified it. If, if, if I'm it's, not, it it's not decertified, it's just ran its end of course. So we're not manufacturing new parts. As she said, we're replacing with salvage parts or rebuild parts. Um, there will be a time, probably another four years, where we can't get any parts. But every county, there were 60 counties left up to date, and about half of those have replenished. So when this year is said and done, we'll probably have about 30 counties in the state that hasn't bought new voting machines. Those will we'll have to keep keep those going on until they get the money or funding to buy. Okay. 
So, so what do we do with our old machines? Are y'all going to purchase them? We're taking them back and we're disposing of them. If they're not giving us nothing for them, but you're going to sell these other counties. No, parts off of them. Well, 2580 Yes, there, there's a there's a trade in of 2580. It's going to cost us that <laughs> in disposal. There, we have to go through each machine that we take back with a fine tooth comb and take certain parts out of them. If there's any salvageable parts, which most often there's not many, we'll put those on the shelf for down to use or down the road for other counties to use. But most of this equipment will actually go on a truck up to Columbus, goes through a car shredder and gets shredded properly. Any other question? David, providing an obligation, providing uh, the ability for citizens to vote is absolutely an obligation for county government. I am curious, does Verity have any ties to Dominion? No, sir. Absolutely no. none. None. The question has been asked by people. I'm sure it has. <laughs> No, uh, I know the question keeps coming up that George yeah. Solaros is involved with Dominion. We have never found a link. I did a there's search and I couldn't find it. There, there's no links. Um, Heart Inner City was owned by HIG. They recently let that terminate. Now they're owned by another group, investment group out of Washington. But it's nothing to do with George Solaros or that group. I mean, that's not true. I read it on the internet. <laughs> we got a motion. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, to Squire Travis's about how soon we can get them and get them up and running. It's when you get a voting machine, it's not like you plug it in and, and you rip run it. You have to do certification on it. Um, they come out and set the machines. The Board of Elections has a procedure that you have to advertise. There's a lot of legalities about obtaining a piece of election equipment and then putting it out at a precinct to allow the voters to vote on it. So there's a long process that will um, will begin when we get the actual voting machines delivered. Harper's going to come out and do a demo for the Board of Elections so we know how it works, hands-on training, so we're able to train our precinct workers. Harp also provides training for our precinct workers so we know that they're getting all the information they need to allow our citizens to cast a, a secure vote on, on these machines and I feel very, very confident in purchasing these machines because this is what we have had for for as long as I can ever remember and even before that. So they don't have anything to do with Dominion. Believe me, there's been a lot of chatter on social media about the voting in Spencer County and I can tell you with, without a doubt that the voters who pass a ballot in this election in this county, their ballot counts, it's secure and I, I have no no qualms about it. So. Yeah, my only concern was the time because, you know, just like the vehicles, Ford vehicles, we're getting, we can't get them. You know, I just want to make sure that yeah. the manufacturer of the sure. equipment, you know, it, is but, up and you know, that's do a, it by uh, the primary next, next yeah. brand. And, and that's a very yeah. good question because chips are hard, hard to get. We have to forecast with our, with heart in our city way down the road. This deal's been going on with you guys, and I had this on the forecast for quite some time. Um, took a risk, you know, y'all could have went with another vendor if they submitted uh, a bid, they didn't, but we took a risk that, hey, we're going to go ahead and forecast as a good deal, so the equipment's setting there. It, it's produced and ready. It'll take from the time of order for them to get it properly prepped and in boxes sent to us. We unbox it, we go through every piece to make sure it's working properly, test it, then we physically deliver it here and take your own out. And at that time, I'll set with her board and set up a demo machine. And it'll be available to anybody here or people off the street and come in and look at it and vote on it with a demo valve on it. So, yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? We've got a motion. Call roll. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Beaverston? Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jeremy? Yes. All right. I just need a signature on the thing and I'll tell you when you want me to work.
Good. Well, let me, I'm going to scan it and I'll call you. Know, That's it. perfect. Okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay, okay. next up is uh, Sheriff Security Cameras. I'm sorry. We're going to take a three and a half minute break.
Uh, and, and I'm going to pop out numbers here. One was like 54, uh, another one was like 10,000, another one was 16,000. Right. Know, like, we much different. The cover sheet says uh, that approximately cost of 6,500. Well, but, well, I want to quote. Hang on a second. My quote is 5,784. Is there more than 5,784? Well, I wanted to go with 65, up to 6,500 calls out. When we get in there, there could be we, other. There could be, say, well, that one camera we thought would cover this whole area, we're going to put another one over here. That type of thing. I don't think it ever gets 6,500. Uh, but one thing I did do with Louisville Fire is uh, the bid that was ten thousand some dollars. I marked out all the bid prices and sent him that sheet and had him bid that sheet for me. And he actually come in under his bid of what he was going to sell. So that's the forty-six sixty-four. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that you wanted to go with. That's the one. That's the price of the well, that one or I don't know about my cameras. Uh, one of those two bids somewhere in that area. Uh, but he did what the other guy did, and that guy did it at ten thousand dollars. He did it for six hundred dollars. So Little Fire, and uh, I think Little Fire Safety, and Little Fire they, uh, Safety. they uh, were by far the best bids. Uh, they've been in business for a long time, and uh, it's going to be a process of going through and making sure everything is covered. Uh, we will have a camera in the uh, evidence room, and I've said always, evidence is one of the most. So you, you need a motion to uh, approve the purchase of security cameras from the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. Now, we can move outside the sheriff's office, guarding our vehicle, or showing our vehicle, plus showing the front of the office if anything was transpired. And that would be from Louisville Fire and Safety, not to exceed 6,500. Right. That'd be so the we'll motion. Make that motion. And that, that really don't think we're going to have it. Just it kind of gives me a little leeway if we run into issues. Scott, you know if there's going to be a library and archives retention schedule? There will be. Okay. There will be. And so we'll be able to keep all that footage mm -hmm. for that many mm -hmm. years? Yes. Okay. And uh, there will be, uh, in each cell, we're putting a uh, camera with audio in each holding cell. So many times when we arrest a couple of people, we put them in, in the holding cell. There's a lot of conversation going on, and it could be information that will help us with other cases. And we will have up signs with this area of video, record, video and audio recording. The bad guy's not always smart, so we take advantage when we can. I make a motion to go ahead and accept the video. Up to, not to exceed 6,500. Okay, we got a motion. I'll second that. All right, question. Uh, the, the first bit, a little fire at the safety, uh, 5784, and then Eric Cox, same person, with says Little Fire and Rescue. Yeah, same same company. Okay, uh, but he's he, he, on his first one, he's got 32 channel uh, uh, unit, and the other one's the second one, 16 channel. And what that is is the other company that uh, it did 10,000 some dollars. I wanted to see what the big difference was. Uh, basically, the local fire just works a lot cheaper, and, and I, their labor costs weren't near as high. So what I did, I sent the second highest company, I, I marked out all the prices, sent him that, then he was bidding on what that guy did, and that guy bid originally a 16 channel rate rather than a 32. And his tank and little fire's bid come in even less on, on that bid than what he did. So what are you going with the 32 or 16? 32. 32. Okay. All right. Your motion. No other comments, questions, or concerns. Call the roll, please. Call the committee. Yes. Call Henderson. Yes. Call Travis. Yes. Call Travis. Yes. Call Jerry Moody. Yes. Call Bill. Yes. All right. The sheriff. The motion passes. By the way, motion uh, or uh, next uh, item is the. Uh, I forgot. I forgot something. Okay. Uh -oh. Is 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 the money available to buy those cameras from any drug money that we had left over to sell the house? Cares money, FARPA money, grant money. You can get where you want to, but I don't care. <laughs> I think that's probably your responsibility. No, well, let, let, me, let me say this: drug fund money bought these, right? Do we have drug fund money to buy these? I, I, I still have some drug fund money in there, and I have other plans to do some other things. Okay. 
But is there enough in the drug money yes. to, to purchase these? Mm -hmm. There is. Okay. okay. All right. Um, uh, next item is uh, the uh, traffic speed sign. Uh, as y'all know, we uh, pieced together a traffic trailer. It's been very, very popular. Uh, I'm sure y'all have been in David with uh, requests. Uh, now the mayor is even asking me uh, if I can put it on some of these city streets, which I don't have a problem with as long as y'all don't have county. But uh, they call this soft enforcement. It's just basically reminding people, hey, to get a little fast, slow down. Uh, I think it saves lives. We've been very fortunate since I've been in the office. We've only had one traffic fatality. Uh, two, if you counted another one that was totally drug and alcohol related, it had nothing to do with anything. But other than, you know, he made that decision. So, uh, but I was hoping uh, if we could put two of these on 55, one, or as they come into the county, and then one is they're coming down the three lane. Everybody picks up speed coming down the three lane. Now, I want you to be aware, I'm not afraid of writing tickets. We have wrote tickets, and we'll continue to write tickets. But I think we're serving our public better overall by saying, hey, pay attention, rather than, I can't have a deputy out there 24 7. Just can't do it. You know. And now they got a $200 ticket. Uh, Little Mouth, uh, we got a, uh, you know, it did show there was an issue up there. Off the top of my head, I say we want to 15, 20 tickets up there. Are they still speeding up there? Most likely. You know. But you try to address, it's just an, and I tell people that these things are not a uh, fix-all, they're just another tool, part of the tool, you know. Uh, and then if, you know, I feel like we need them on 55 worse than anywhere, but then if you uh, so be, maybe put two on 44, you know. I want them maybe coming down the hill uh, in town and another one out towards the county line, towards the county. Okay, so these are not mounted on trailers like what you know. No, these will actually be mounted on posts. And it could be moved if you want. Yeah, but, they, they could. That, but I mean, they mounted, are they uh, solar powered? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, and, and you uh, need four of them. That's what I'm asking for. In the, uh, it, it does come with uh, an unlimited cloud access at the end of the 12 month period. The customer has the option to either renew the cloud at cost of 400 per sign or resort back to the Bluetooth option. I think we'll probably go with the Bluetooth. Uh, at no cost, I think after the first year we probably looked at one thing uh, to keep in mind too is that uh, those are on state uh, highways. So uh, yes, and I have talked to the state highway, at the, and uh, uh, Keith King said that uh, he said they'll be fine, no problem with it. Uh, he said technically it says something to the fact they had to be moved ever so far, ever so often. <laughs> you know, and Mount Washington, where I, where I got the idea of Mount Washington has one is you turn on the bypass, right. and it helps. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody. I mean, we all get to thinking about all the things we got going on and not paying attention. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's just a reminder to slow down and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll save lives with it. Well, these new cars are quiet and smooth and you can be doing 80 and feel like you're crossing. I stopped the guy the other day and I wrote him a ticket. He was running 77 mile an hour and 55. Nice as fellow you ever want to meet. And I told him, I said, buddy, when you're going that fast, and he was a, a contractor for heating and air. He said, buddy, he said, I didn't, I wouldn't think about nothing about driving but trying to get to the hell the next place. Yeah. And of course, that time of year, you know, it's hard. And I said, well, buddy, I said, when you're driving that place on the road, we're going to crush the ticket. Who's going to install these? Uh, I would say it would be a combination with us and the, and the highway department. Mm -hmm. Keith King is a fantastic guy to work with. He really is. So I'm hoping they will set the post for <coughs> and then we would go out and do the mounting. The cost of, uh, associated with that as far as the state? Don't know. Okay. Not that I know of, I mean. Okay. Now, uh, these being... Uh, expensive as they are do you think maybe we need to have some sort of a remote camera on that because i tell you exactly what's going to happen you're going to get some four o'clock in the morning drunk up fool coming through there and says i don't like that sign they're going to go over and destroy it and steal it you know i but wish we, we could have a little camera maybe with bluetooth that could go to an app i don't know that would show 
Where we do, or I'm almost sure it's going to happen. I'm not going to say you're not right. I mean, they're stealing trailers right now, so with the flowing on them and everything else. We did recover another trailer just in that night. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, right. so really, it's kind of a two-part thing. If you want to do just two, I, I'm fine with that. Put them on 55, and but if you feel like doing four, that's my recommendation. And if y'all think they need to go in a different place, but you know, I kind of, I kind of get a feel for what, uh, you know, by running radar and stuff, what it is. Everybody thinks we have all this speeding, like from six to eight o'clock in the morning. It don't happen because it's kind of funny to watch them. Here they all come, and like a bunch of little ducks, all running that same speed. You have your speeding after about nine, ten, eleven, twelve o'clock when the roads have opened up, and then people's not paying attention. But when they're in their little groups, I mean. They come, they go to group that way, and really we don't have that much trouble uh, with speed. Because I've run it early in the morning, and then, but you won't start even writing tickets till 9, 10 o'clock before you start catching people that's got open road to where they can kind of forget. And put Is this them. exactly the same unit that Mount Washington has? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, I believe it is. Because I called and talked to Mount Washington about where they got their unit. And uh, he recommended, he said, well, I'll tell you though. Eval is the one we got, and I said, well, that's what I bought from the trailer. A actually, these, what I want to buy is the exact same thing I put on the trailer, only it's going to be mounted on a post. It's the same thing that we see at Mount Washington. Same it's, size, it's, it's larger than the one at Mount Uh The company I talked to didn't really recommend using the size Mount Washington used out there because at 55, it's a little harder to see. So we're going to go with, the, I think it's a 13 inch and they're recommending a 15 inch. It's got bigger numbers on there. You know how you can see and I can't either. So. Is this sign, is, is, is it, I don't know if you know what you're saying. Did the numbers light up when they're speeding or just the outline of the sign itself flash up like the one in Hatmakers down there? You know, it's just does not measure the, the speed. speed. No, it, it, it'll flash the speed. And if you're over the speed limit, it'll tell you to slow down or thank you or whatever. Uh, and one other thing about our trailer, when it was out on 55, it was, it's got a dial and it goes 50. Mm -hmm. Not 50. Yeah. You know? I said, why can't it turn it on up? Well, the other day when I talked to the sales rep, I said, I said, what's that deal with y'all only having it up to 50? He goes, oh, no, we can go into the software and change that. Well, I didn't know it. So we're going to uh, go into the software. So, and next time I put, put it out on a major highway, it would have, you know, to say 55. Because it was telling people that was running 51, they're still going too fast. Yeah, you know, some of that. Yeah, but, but still yet, we were getting data. You know, that was the main thing we were after. Well, right uh, now, they were yeah. sitting out in uh, Watkins. Yeah, yeah. I'll be moving Do later on today out to on Normandy. And then, uh, unless y'all tell me somewhere you want it at, I'm going to bring it, uh, take it up to Highview States and run up there for we're trying to run seven days, at least seven days. Do we know yet how much carryover there is? Uh, Brittany and I looked at the budget the other day. I can take it out of the office supplies and something else. Well, right now you've got $11,916.11 in your communications radar video equipment. Yeah, and I don't see us buying. If you only bought two with the 6500 that we just approved, that would put you at eleven thousand nine hundred. We did put transfers on there to take care of the we moment. Oh, they did. Okay. And we took it against. Uh, I think from where Scott and Brittany had talked, they I think they guess office supplies for now there, but surplus. I mean, we ended the <coughs> budget for this year of two million five hundred seventy-six thousand five hundred three dollars. We ended up with three million five hundred. Yeah. So we got. Yeah. So, so, so that's going to leave you like $2,000 for office supplies when you originally had $7,500? We can write on total paper, man. We're, we're pretty creative. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, we'll try to get paid, I mean, yeah, this, the, Depends on how tight things you get. Yeah. <laughs> the the 6500 is for four sides, is that correct? Not each, but four. No, total price for four is uh, almost $11,000. Yeah, almost $11,000. $2,700 vegan is what I got the one guy down there. 
There are, every company I, I called, it was $27.99, $27.50, and I finally told this, the guy I really kind of wanted to buy from, I said, if I buy four of them, will you sell them to me for $27 million? He goes, we'll do that. Yeah, oh yeah, the picture you said, something about the budget in there, two of them would be $11,000 or something like that. Just kind of clarify. All right. Would you be satisfied to get two and see yeah, how it works? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. That's what I, I want you to know. I mean, I think if we're just going to buy two, let's put them on 55 because everybody knows that's the biggest road we have things happen. So if you just want to go two, I'm fine with that. And then maybe buy two more later or next year. I'm cool with that too. Uh, I have I have tried to encourage a lot of these uh, HOAs that you know say, well, I want y'all to come out here and write everybody a ticket. I said, that's going to be your mom, your grandma, your neighbor, your friend, your uncle, and there. And I said, I'll do it, but is that really what you want to happen? I said, well, I, and some of these HOAs is amazing. They have a pretty good little chunk of some bank for It's just a reminder, like a yeah. lot of it's just to, to keep an honest person honest. Exactly. Exactly. And you remind people when you got something on your mind. Uh, this is probably a question for, for Todd, but uh, would, would these signs be illegal to put in subdivisions on county roads? I don't think so. No more so than my sign. You know, say, 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 say if we, if, 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 uh, the homeowner association paid for those signs. Mm -hmm. and say you want you want more uh, stop block, stop signs and speak up the signs in your neighborhood, and I have that to that complaint stop line. There's only one coming in, one going out. Can you put more back in the back? God says no. It's it, you know, the state reg says we do this, we do that. But uh, if the homeowner association paid for these signs mm -hmm. and we could let them know that that's possible, then they would probably. Yeah, and I hope that uh, as they see these things more, uh, people will start going that direction. Would it be a question for Kent to see if? legal for a homeowner association to buy those signs personally and put them up on the county road. I wrote that down. Yeah. But I mean, I, I've tried to, you know, move that trailer around a lot. You know, it's not going to go everywhere. You know, it's just, uh, we can't get it anywhere. But uh, some of these homeowner associations have actually talked to me about them, and I've sent them the information on these, and uh, whether they're any of them actually bought or not, I don't know. I made a promotion to go ahead and purchase two. I say. The motion a second to purchase two of the speed signs. Any more questions? Surely we got them all out. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes. Excuse me. Um, is there more than one bid on this, or what's the price? What, what Twenty-seven hundred each. Twenty-seven each. Twenty-seven hundred per. Okay. Now, if he'll still hold, I think he'll still hold it at this cost. Hey, don't tell me you're going to lock him up every time he comes to the house. Well, he's in the open line and I ain't going to work. Don't you come down there and get you off. Uh, if I could talk about a couple other things real quick. This is the week that we're leading up to our school shooting scenario. Tonight, there is a, uh, from 6 to 8 at the high school uh, library. Uh, it's open to the public. Uh, it's open to the school uh, uh, personnel. And they're actually giving them a, uh, training our credit for coming to this thing tonight. So hopefully I have a lot of people there. Uh, the next night will be EMS and fire. It'll be at the uh, fire station. The next time will be law enforcement. And then Thursday <coughs> the day that we'll be doing the shooting scenario training at the high school. I've contacted Keith uh, King about having some of those flashing signs that the state has. So when people come by and see ambulances and fire and everything, They'll say school shooting scenario training, do not be alone or something like that. Uh, you know. I just so, say training, don't start out with school shooting. Yeah, you know, so I might stop on yeah. well, yeah. 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 Training in progress, do not be alone. Uh, yeah. I, might, I might do it. Uh, and one other thing is October the 4th, uh, our memorial will here for our fallen officer Frank Doolin. Uh, it's the day we plan on uh, dedicating it. We will hopefully we'll have a, a drum corps, honor guards, bagpipes, horses, the whole nine yards. And uh, I think a lot What's of What's the date on that? October, it's a Monday, October 4th, I think. Is that right? What time of day? 
that we are first principal board meeting. Uh -huh. First Monday of the month will be our principal board meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Could we have it before the meeting? We'd rather have it after. I have not set of time. Okay. Of course, we never know what time y'all going to be done yapping in the <laughs> <laughs> If we didn't have a shirt, we could get out of the I'll tell you what, all the way just cancel it. See? I got the, I got the authority to do something, let's go all the way. Uh, how would you? I mean, I'm fine. I was hoping to do it about 10 o'clock. And maybe you could recess a few minutes and, and come over. I mean, I'm saying the ceremony 30 minutes at the most. You know, just, we got plenty of time to think about it. Okay. All right. So, okay. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen. Please come to my office if you got any questions. Call me. Reach out to me. You're always welcome. And Tim, matter of fact, called me last night on the day off. I uh, didn't want to be bothered. Not that uh, no, right. Also, uh, uh, Thursday, I think it's the fifth. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've been following, but they're going to have an event over in Shelbyville on the opioid. Uh, yeah, and friends. we won't be there. You won't. Okay. Yeah, all right, no. uh, maybe I thought of something else just a second. Oh, uh, the, uh, I talked about us trying to be accredited. Uh, actually, there's a team of two men in my office right now going through things, checking things out. It's a plot check to get us up to speed where we need to be. And I've got two of my deputies with them, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave so I can kind of catch back up with them. All right. uh, hopefully we're going to be accredited. He, he, he asked me this morning, when do you want to get this done? I said, ASAP. And so uh, we're moving forward hard on that. Thank you, gentlemen. I don't expect Scott Travis is going to get unruly between now and the end of the meeting. If he does, <laughs> put Chris Lemp on it. <laughs> All right. Next up, uh, I've got a Quote in there for graveling the lot next to my office. I've had several requests. Um, the one is for the Oktoberfest. They'd like to use that lot for some uh, vendors and so forth. Also, uh, Progressive Dinner, I think Tourism would like to use that lot. They're going to do the wine and cheese part of the uh, Progressive Dinner. So, and I've long wanted to get that lot graveled. Uh, but I've got a quote in here for $2,000. I'm not really wild about that, but I would like, I, well, I'll try. I mean, I, I would like the court to approve graveling that lot uh, up to a maximum of $2,000. That's what I have to do. I'll make a motion home. that we approve the $2,000 to the gravel parking lot. All I need is up to $2,000. Hopefully, we can get it done with less than that. So the quote says 2000 so I... Well, I don't want to necessarily be locked in using Queen's escape. He's given us a quote, but I'm also getting uh, pricing from uh, Todd uh, to have the road department do it. Of course, we would have to pay uh, just before the job run and the road run. And so, uh, anyway, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. You, would you rather have Zach do this? Or? No, it doesn't make a difference. Okay. Because you know, I think Todd has some My questions. motion is to uh, pay up to $2,000 to have the gravel parking lot. Correct. That sounds good. At the, uh, okay, as we go. Anybody want to second that? Uh, I'll second you. All right, we got a second. The motion is second. Any discussion, comments, questions, or concerns? Call the roll, please. Judge Riley? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? No. Squire Beaverson? No. All right, motion passes, and we'll proceed to get that done. Uh, next up is Chris uh, uh, request to hire a full-time Taylor Nation. Um, she is part-time now. I'd like to move her into a full-time position at twelve dollars and fifty cents per hour. Uh, I'd also like to waive any uh, 
uh, drug screening and background. She's already employed, so there shouldn't be a need for that. But motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. And we've got a second. Call the roll, please. Who's the second on that, please? Mr. Travis. Thank you. Do you mind if I write down the motion? No, go ahead. Thank you. Take that, take that. Thank you.
If you don't have any of the back on the front of that, that's where you got the ones that you got. Probably he didn't want to ask last time, so. Part of the reason I asked on that, I'm making sure the old man is going to be staying here. It's usually more confrontation. Yeah, it might make a difference. Are you moving these bad boys? Oh, you're about to get the car. Are you moving these? I don't know. I'm going to send the money back. I'm just going to check. No. Oh, cool. But I hate to see us do that. Did you guys do an audio recording of each one? It's not yeah, even going back against the national debt. Yeah, the only thing, because just send it and give it to the Lord.